All right, today I'm going to look at this GE LED uh, bulb. It's a 10 LS SW, 10 watt, 150 milliamp, 760 lumen. Uh, a while back, a YouTuber, Big Clive, uh, mentioned another YouTuber's channel, Adrian, uh, and he had a video that I saw where he looked at this, but he only plugged it in and popped the top off of it. So I figured I would take it apart the rest of the way. Uh, so let's take a look at this. All right. Get that out of the, yeah. All right. So let's see. So 122 volts is what we got here. And Ah, only so many decimal places, but this is only showing somewhere between 140 or around 140 milliamps. Uh, so it's a little less than what's shown on the case. And pulling 10.28 watts. It's a little bit over what it's shown as. And power factor of 0.61. All right, I guess then let's take a look at, well, let's shut it off first real quick. All right, so the top pops up pretty easy anyway. And we've got uh, seven cobs with, uh, I believe there's two elements in each one. Let's see. So let's take a look at what voltage that is. And of course, let's see here. So that's okay. Well, I see it better with that. Maybe. If it's uh, whatever. Okay. See if I can see. So that is forty four point seven volts DC. And well, if you do the math, forty four point eight divided by fourteen in series of three point two. So that's close. All right, so then I want to check the milliamps. Oh, it's warm. So this is just on a thermal paste. This is where uh, Adrian had stopped. It comes up very easily. I want you to clear some of this paste off of here. Sure. Let's get this other stuff out. Isolating it. Okay. Is this in frame? Okay. So, no, if you want to have a closer look at that. Okay. That is, and that is pulling two point or two hundred seventy milliamps DC. 
Okay. Let's look at the construction of these. So this is a good one to have. Uh, you can see that it's got, unlike most LEDs I've seen take apart, uh, it's just got two pins sticking up, so it's actually not soldered in, which is interesting. Uh, and then it's got a tight fit around this edge in here. So I already have a bad one that I've ripped apart. Let's look at these pieces. Okay, so here's the main case. It has an aluminum shell on the inside. I think it was an aluminum cylinder that was probably pressed into that shape. And then it was actually part of the mold because this these edges come around. So it was probably part of an actual mold for the plastic. So make the metal first, mold the plastic uh, cap. As you see, easily clips into the connectors. Uh, the circuit card, I'll get to that diagram later. Uh, but it's got the two pins, got two wires sticking off the back. It's got two notches in it uh, so that when it's slid down in here, which doesn't happen easily. <laughs> Maybe it's done by a machine. It locks in in those locations. Uh, you got a little bit of heat shrink, so the wire comes over the edge, and this little slot bends down one way or the other. And then the cap, the screw cap would have to be, I wonder if that's done by a machine or not. It'd have to be perfectly aligned so that this, so that the middle wire comes through the middle and then would have to bend over this area here for this to slot in the end. Uh, and then it would be crimped on. And then obviously you'd get thermal paste around this edge. And this would have to be aligned pretty well too. Not easy to find. Probably more thermal paste. And then the cap would go on. So from a repairability standpoint, these uh, LEDs are you know, this isn't what's going to go bad. It's going to be the driver. So you can easily take these off and reuse them if for whatever reason one of them did go bad. But getting this thing out of here yeah, basically requires destroying the screw. So there's no real good way of taking this apart to repair it because you can't even get down there with snips to snip the ends off uh, to put longer wires on or something. So not really something to be able to repair easily at all. And oh, I was supposed to look at this a little bit. Uh, this is just a, a piece of aluminum that's got pre-cut and then on the top is printed uh, directly on another piece of aluminum. Uh, these rivets are actually just pressed, not really rivets, they're pressed straight through this piece of metal and terminate it at the end so it's not like they're making a double layer and routering out all that. It's just one piece they're pushing it straight through. Uh, don't know, I imagine maybe there's some kind of pace between them, I don't know. And Alright, so then I will get back with the diagram later. So this bad one, just to look uh, obviously there's a lot of discoloration in the center, so I'm not sure what, whether this diode or this voltage or, or current regulator is what failed, but, or maybe one of the other components. Uh, but I'll, okay, here is the diagram. Uh, here's the other uh, one I pulled apart, so you take a look at that. And there. 
it's pretty close up. Uh, some of the components on here had different numbering, so you'll see on this diagram that I have double double descriptions basically. Uh, so we'll go over the components. We have a fusible resistor, or let me zoom in a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. So a fusible resistor, a varistor, your bridge rectifier, capacitor. We have a surface mount resistor, an inductor, uh, another capacitor, the integrated circuit, uh, more surface mount resistors, surface mount capacitor, resistors, surface mount diode, uh, more surface mount resistors, another inductor, only uh, get close up. It's only two posts on that actually connected to anything, so it's just straight through, uh, and another capacitor and well the LEDs obviously out on the end all right so uh, when I was testing this uh, with my multimeter I was getting about 150 volts at this point about 42.5 at this point above the diode and 44.8 at the load um, this is pretty typical I got smoothing more smoothing with inductor, smoothing after it, and then you come into this uh, integrated circuit, which I could not find uh, anywhere, but looking at how this is laid out, it looks similar to a buck converter. Um, you're getting a sense voltage, sensing voltage between uh, these two resistors, uh, and that's telling this to turn on and off. The signal that's going through here, like a pulse width traveling across here through the inductor to the load. Um, and that's about all that's going on. Um, I think I probably already talked about there being how many uh, LEDs were at the end there. And I think that's about all I would need to go over. Yep, just look for the information in the under the description. And that's it. Thanks.